All right, people, what's the story? Uh, welcome along to another um, Making Things Happen episode. So I have a, a good buddy of mine that I'm going to interview today. He is in the publishing scene. He, he, he runs his own kind of uh, electronic uh, dance uh, music kind of uh, publication. And uh, he's an interesting story to tell. Um, he basically was working for another kind of brand that he set up. Didn't work out went his own way and um, had to reskill, uh, learn a lot of different, you know, things to, to, to put this kind of publication together. And uh, with that, he did do uh, a lot of interesting stuff and uh, uh, interviewed a lot of interesting people in the scene as well. Uh, he's been at it for years. Uh, it didn't come easy. Uh, success never does. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's a good interview. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine, like I said before, and uh, you know, I hope you, I hope you get some value out of it. So, with that being said, enjoy, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right, people, welcome back to another episode of Making Things Happen. I have a good friend of mine today, Mike. Um, he's got a good story to tell, uh, and I think you're gonna like it. It's going to be good. Um, so, Mike. What's the question? Welcome. Shy? welcome. <laughs> Finally hitting it down. I know, dude. I know. Welcome. Welcome. It's a, it's a nice sunny day here on a, in Dublin, isn't it? Come on, it's bacon. It's bacon. It's sweltering bacon. central. It's like fucking 25 degrees here, you know what I mean? So, it's like kind of feels it's so much. like holiday. <laughs> So look, yeah, cool, dude. Uh, let's jump into it. Um, what are you doing right now? What are you doing right now to make things happen, dude? Uh, I know you're a busy boy doing various things, but uh, tell the audience what you're doing. Uh, what's your What's your passion? What's your business these days? Uh, what's your brand? Uh, you have an interesting brand, but I'll let you, uh, yeah, focus on that and, and, and let people know what's what's going on. Okay, so at the moment, as we speak, I'm uh, running a dance music magazine called Iconic Underground. Yeah. Um, it's been running for about five years. Um, and obviously with the last year and a bit, with, with everything that's happened, it's kind of, the breaks are kind of slightly on it because obviously there's no live events and stuff like that. Big time, um, yeah. The magazine itself, it was um, digital and print and website um, built from scratch, uh, so with no money. And there was no brand, there was no logo, there was just an idea. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was certain circumstances had to happen to force the uh, move to do the first issue. And those things happened. And uh, I suppose here we are 20 issues later. And yeah, enough. fair play, fair play, fair play. So, magazine, hard copy, digital, all good. Why? What is the driving force? Why did you get involved in this? What, why, why are you in a publishing scenario right now? What, what is the deal, dude? Tell us. Music, you know, uh, I've been involved in... Um, they call it electronic dance music today but for us old schoolers it's uh, dance music and um, i've been interested in it since the early 90s um as a you know listener to the to stuff on the radio to top of the pops that was an old music uh, show back in in the in the 90s to go into clubs to being an mc in the clubs the clothing the parties, the lifestyle, the buzz, everything about that whole scene I fell in love with and I had a massive passion for it. And um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all the different things. I wanted to be involved in every bit of it. And it's like my social life, you know, everything revolved around the club at the weekend. And I mean, if you want to, if you want to have an insight into the type of lifestyle that I was leading, watch the film called Human Traffic and all those characters are us and my mates. 
Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's that's um, exactly, and and all the other millions of people, you know, that got involved in this, they can all relate to that as well. So everything revolved around the whole scene, the party scene, uh, the people that you met came from that scene, you know, in some cases bonded for life. And it was a kind of a, you know, it was a tipping point in the UK at the time as well. And uh, we were coming out of um, a long recession and um, people needed or, or were looking for something different. And that change came in so rapidly over the space of a couple of years the second summer all over night. And I was too young for that, but I was listening to those early tracks um, on the radio at the time, you know. So I was inspired by it. Um, and I kind of, once I got involved with listening to the music and then funny enough, I got a double cassette tape from my parents at Christmas in uh, 1990. Um, and it was um, Hardcore Ecstasy. And it had two tapes in it. And one of them, there was a track on tape two, Energy Flash by Joey Beltram. Yeah. And I remember hearing that. Now I'd listened to different, you know, I'd been listening to dance music for a few years, but obviously then it's pre-internet and all the rest of it. So it was like whatever you could get your hands on at the time. But when I heard that track, it changed everything for me as regards. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to meet the guy actually. And it's, 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 you know, it's, he ended up being on the first front cover, but, it impressed me that much at that time that I, I always preferred the edgier, darker, more bang inside of dance music. I like all the uplifting stuff, don't get me wrong, but it's like that inspired me that much that at some point in the future, I wanted to have a chat with him. Now, the idea for the magazine didn't come at that time, but I knew I wanted to talk to the guy that had made that track. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who was that? Joey Bellran. Very good, very good. Yeah, an old school. Yeah, he was a he, he was a, a pivotal pioneer in how uh, what people thought about dance music at the time, and you know he considered himself a house music producer and DJ. And when that track was released, it was his seventeenth release, I think, at that time, and yeah. uh, that's when it all blew up for him. And then the UK media then decided to start labeling him as techno. Even though he didn't consider himself as techno, he just thought it was edgier house or darker house or whatever else. I gotcha. But yeah. like, people just latched onto that sound, and even today, like when you you listen to that record, it's still current, and nothing has matched it or or um, has equaled it. It's just its own baby, mm. and um, you know it's it it still resonates with me today. And the fact that I got to speak to uh, Joey Beltram and interview him. I know I'm probably jumping the gun on the questions here, but it's like, <laughs> uh, it was such a, to think 30 odd years ago, it, um, when I was a kid, when I was 16, thinking I want to talk to this guy and eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting how you sort of, it's interesting how you sort of had that drive and the reason why you sort of got into publishing and the, the whole mag. I mean, like you and I know each other a good 15 years plus and we met one random night in town in Dublin and used to come down to some of the nights that I used to run with Barry and all that kind of good stuff, you know, so. I was you, always down there, man. Yeah, percent. you did. You were, you were definitely down there a lot. <laughs> It was great to have you, of course, and you used to bring a few people down and it was great to sort of support the night kind of thing. But in the um, days. yeah, I know. I wish they were back. They might come back soon. You never know. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, like to, to get into the kind of publishing world, though, uh, Mike, was is a big thing. And, you know, you are now quite established in the sense of that because you have a lot of uh, social media following. You have a lot of people that are kind of um, you know, that you've interviewed that are actually quite significant in the world, you know, in, in the dance music scene. Um, but that's all good. But what are some of the downfalls that you've had when, when you're putting this whole thing together? Because nothing is ever easy. How long is the interview? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there were so many challenges, if, if, if that's what you mean. And uh, yeah. because basically... I jumped in at the deep end. I was involved in another magazine first, but I wasn't designing it or I wasn't doing anything as the artistic layout. I was organizing the interviews and doing the interviews. So 
when I left that um, after after we put out nine issues with that magazine, I just decided to set up my own and um, jumped into the deep end. So I had to learn mag design. I had to learn editing. I had to learn marketing. I had to learn all the, the crap with social media. And I mean, I, I still struggle with this, the social media thing today because yeah. it's just one of those evil, uh, it's one of those necessary evils. Necessary you know what I mean? evils, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, pain in the bollocks, like, but um, it's... It can it, it takes up so much time. So there was so many different aspects of that, as well as organizing interviews, as well as doing the live interviews, as well as fucking transcribing them and all the rest of it. And it's like, yeah, it's I think if I'd have realized at the time when I said I was going to do this, if I could have seen the timeline for the next year or maybe the next two years and seen all the different things that I'd have to overcome. I might have just said, oh, fuck it. Like, that's that's way too much work. Yeah, you, know yeah, I mean? yeah. you don't always see everything in front of you. You just knew that it was a good idea. And I knew it was a good idea. But it was, how do I make it happen with no money? And I wanted to try and see if I could do it because something kept saying to me, do it. My gut was saying to me, do it. Even though I didn't have all of those skills and I didn't have um, enough connections in that world and to make things happen so pretty much everything that you know people see today with the the magazine it was you know all learned from scratch it didn't come from anybody that was involved in magazines before that you know so i didn't get any influence i didn't get any help from uh, anybody else in 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 in, in uh, publications or anything like that. so it was all learned on the fly and you yeah. know lots of Lots of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, dead ends and, and winding roads and stuff, as, as, as anybody learns, as, as you learn when you're making your own path. And when you're leading that path, and it's not like you've got the big brother to help you go like, okay, you're not just doing this, you're not doing that, don't go down there. So I had to go through all those different narratives. So, mm. you know, the first, the first issue from, from leaving the previous magazine to getting the first issue out, like it was nearly a year. Um, wow! Jeez. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was uh, you know, it it, it was kind of like I put the gauntlet down, and I'd said I was going to do it, so I had to fucking do it, regardless of whatever. So yeah, it was it was tough, you know. So this interview is not about sympathy or anything else. It's just like I wanted to do it, but it was bloody hard. Yeah, it was bloody. Hard. It was very hard, you know. So one hundred percent, because you know, you did you you. Uh... You, you had to deal with a lot of skill sets, new skill sets, the publishing, the, the software, interviewing people. It's not That's easy not interviewing about. people, <laughs> you know, and especially people that actually have authority in the scene. And then you're coming in as a kind of a newbie in the whole lot and you're trying to build this whole thing out. And it's not oh, even that then. You've, you've got yeah. that side of it. And then you also have the followers, the people that actually are trying to sort of dig your kind of vibe in the whole lot. And, reading your your magazine and your your interviews and 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 you know trying to be the authority in some way shape or form uh that's all a massive task mike so you definitely exactly and jumped if i'd have thought it there. through which i didn't and um, if i'd have thought it through the same way that i'm talking this to you now i probably would have talked myself now i'm i'm a positive individual i'm a go-getter but it's like the magnitude of what I had to overcome. And it's like, you know, the projects that you've worked on over the years as well. If I'd have known all the stuff that I would have had to have done by myself, um, yeah, I could probably easily say that I could have been persuaded not to do it. But um, hmm. thankfully, that's not always the case with goals. And the thing that I've learned over the years is that your goal has to intimidate. Hmm. That means it's worthy of you because it means you're aiming high. There's not point aiming low and hitting the fucking target. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, my yeah. I was completely treading water. I was completely out of the comfort zone, um, and it was my own motivation. And there's a lot of times that I was like, "Fuck, am I going to be able to to keep doing this as well?" And in the back of my mind, it's like, "Go on, a little bit more, a little bit more." Mm. Then you get pissed off, bang the head against the wall, calm down, and then you go back at it again. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah it was, you did. And, and <laughs> because i i followed your i followed your path dude and it was uh it was you know it was a tough one um but 
being persistent uh, and consistent and learning new skill sets eventually gets you there somewhere at the end of the day, you know? So Absolutely. That's all it is. That's the secret to success. And it's not a fucking secret. It's like, you know, in the age of instant everything that we're in now, instant success, instant messaging, instant this and that, you still can't take away from, you know, dogged persistence. And even if you don't have talent in any of those areas, if you have a passion for it mm. and you love, you know, the idea of it, you can succeed in it. If yeah, 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 absolutely. 100%. Passion, patience, 100%. persistence, desire, tenacity, and just not fucking giving up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because the, 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 the thing about what most people will probably realize is anybody that's ever tried to do anything, they might have told too many people. And then certain people that they were told don't want them to succeed are they in the ear. And at the first hurdle that that person needs, you've got the people coming in going, told you it was a load of bollocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they'll be straight in to nip at the person. So what I've learned as well over the years is like, if you're aiming for a goal, tell as least amount of people as possible. Mm. Are only the ones that you know that have your best interests at heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yourself. And I did that, you know, with this as well. But that was a gravity as well that 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 um because i told a few people and so that bullied me when i felt weak or i fell off the horse and felt like giving up and in the back of my mind it's like you know prove it to yourself what would you say to those people now if you meet them do you know what i mean and it's like i don't want to meet people and go oh well yeah it never happened or if i do meet them and you know, I can say if it didn't happen, and but I put me bollocks into it. Yeah, I tried my absolute best, and it didn't happen. Yeah. That's going to happen to people as well, but it's never a failure because it means it's setting yourself up for something else that might come after that. Because you'll always learn from those obstacles, and I've learned fucking loads about myself from that. You did. You know I mean, you did. it's fun to do. Like you did with the mag and I'm not saying it's anywhere near any kind of perfection at all it's like it's 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 a baby that's bloody that, that's growing yeah exactly it's in its development the whole time like you know yeah 100%. that's it and I, you know and I'm under no illusions you know it it, it is difficult um but the, the the motivating factor behind it all was I wanted to know more about the dance music scene so I come from that era pre-internet where it was difficult to get information. So you were only getting it off the back of records or flyers or word of mouth. Um, and I always was interested in the early days of Mixmag, excuse me, in the early days of Mixmag, um, when they were interviewing artists, I always preferred the quotes from the artists because that's coming from the artists themselves rather yeah. than conjecture and and the descriptive part from from the journalist so it was always kind of one of those things that if if i was in a, uh, if i ever got into a position where i was interviewing people like joey beltram or whatever else that it would be long form interview where it would be the whole fucking interview is them talking not just quotes mm. so like it could be like when you read like if you read any of the interviews most of the big interviews that we've done that are online like, for example, Joey Bellram, when you're reading it, it's like you're in the pub having a beer, having mm -hmm. a natter. Normal speak. It's, it's in normal. depth, though, isn't it, as well? You come across as, this is a fucking dude. And speaking like this, mm -hmm. like you'd be with a band, having the banter with somebody, do you know what I mean? Like, it was real rather than a sanitized version. And that was one of the things that sold that, actually, to Joey Bellram was like, and I say what I like. And I was like, yeah, fucking fire away. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to deliver that aspect of it so that because I was interested in knowing loads of the interesting stuff about their life that I thought other people might be interested in, in reading that aspect of it. Because in fairness, in a lot of the music publications, it was all sanitized. Mm. It was very edited, very polished. I didn't want any of that. Yeah. Um, so maybe there was a niche there and an interest there. You know, I didn't know. I didn't do any market research. I didn't do any of that bollocks. I knew that I was interested in that element and that side of people. The same way that we talk. I'm interested in, in the human being, you know, not the fame and all the fucking rest of it. It's like, what? so what makes the person tick? Where'd you come from? Blah, blah, blah. What, you're in, uh, what are your influences and all that? So if I could deliver that in, a, in, in the format of a magazine, I'd be happy with that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, um, you know, so fortunately that I, I ended up finding a lot of the, the, the people that I would have admired and um, 
uh, looked up to in the scene that they were willing to have those type of interviews because no one else had done them with them. Mm. They'd have those type of talks when the camera was turned off and the microphone was turned off. And I thought, well, fuck that. This is the real individual coming across. Mm. You know, um, the feedback that I've got over the last um, few years is like from people that have read that stuff going like, oh, that was wicked. Oh, I never knew that, that he did this and that she did this and all, all the rest of it. That it's like, nice one. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It has, yeah. Um, it, it's given it something different to, you know, obviously you've got DJ and Mixmind and you've got all the publications delivering very similar content. So it's very, very difficult to, when you're up against stuff like that, to kind of um, offer something new. But I knew that's what I was interested in. So it was like, okay, well, after a few different, um, you know, pushes in, in diff- different directions on how the mic should form, it's kind of like, well, look, the long form interview is kind of what's the seller. Mm. And not even really that, that it's the seller. It's like the bit that I find most interesting. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, of course, and even of course, of course. when I go back the line and I'm reading those, sorry, Sean, um, when I read the stuff on the website and stuff, or if I've got one of those you know, hard copies lying around, it's like, it's nice to pick it up and just flip through the pace and go, yeah, that was a fucking good interview. Mm. You know, because it's like, for me, you know, it's still relevant, even if the interview was done five years ago, because the backstory is always the same. Mm. It's only the end bit, what what projects are you doing now that's um, that changes. Mm. So we do recycle some of those uh, interviews. And I reread those interviews, even though I conducted most of those interviews. Do you know what I mean? I think, I don't know if I'm meandering here a bit, but it's like um, uh, that was the aim and passion behind why I did this with the magazine. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. That I was trying to find, it was like trying to find a niche. And that's the most difficult thing. Most people that are trying to um, aim for something, what's my niche? You know, and whatever type of business it is or whatever the goal is or whatever it is about themselves, it's like, always think about what's my niche? What's my niche? And it's fucking difficult. You're going to, mm. you, you, there's so many, there's so many versions of, 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 of everything. Um, and, you know, obviously more so today because we were, we're in saturation mode from the internet. We didn't have that 30 years ago. So um, if you kind of, if people kind of push for, um, what they're interested in, even if they don't have all those relative skills, connections, and money, if that idea keeps burning in them, then then keep pushing it and keep thinking like, what's my niche with this? Yeah. And eventually, slowly but surely, some influence will come along the way. You'll pick up the newspaper on the bus. There'll be something in the paper that you'll just you'll latch onto. It'll be something that you do, you, you click on by accident on the internet. That'll come up something you'll it will keep pushing it in that direction do you know what i mean towards it it's like don't give up when it doesn't happen overnight don't mm. give up when you get knocked back don't give up to the naysayers especially them folks and um, don't give up if you lose your money just keep going right okay that's that's one obstacle that's out of the way and that's the thing it's like you could have 20 obstacles in front of you before you get to the point where you think okay now i've got this done and that happened to me and I had to keep telling myself that the whole way through that first year, there was so many setbacks with software and this and that and no money and motivation and all the rest of it. And um, yeah, each time nice. you get an obstacle, that's when you tick off the list. Go, right, what's fucking next? Then you're going to meet the other obstacle. It's like any athletes, anybody that's ever set up any kind of business, if they're truthful, they're going to say, absolutely. Lots of times it was the dark nights of the soul. You're going to bang your head off the wall going, this mm. is never going to happen. You know, and I think if more people were honest when they're having discussions like this, they'll humanize it to most people where they'll go, well, fuck it. If, if he did that and look what he's done, if she did that and look what she's done today, then maybe my idea might be worth pushing for. You know, and if, if, if anything from this interview comes out that I'd like to, you know, people to grip onto and latch onto is that if you persist in it, Eventually, you'll hold it in your hands. Yeah, I know, hundred percent. And you, you, you did. You, you you went through a lot of you you went through a lot of um, a lot of challenges because me and you would have talked over the years as well about all that kind of good stuff. And uh, you pursued, you pursued, and uh, that's the thing. And you know, leading on to the next question is like, um, we spoke about challenges, but now 
one of the joys, like uh, the joys of actually putting this whole publication together and, you know, what, what, what sort of fulfillment are you getting out of it now? Oh, jeez, it's fucking load. Um, yeah. Because it's, it, you know, before COVID. And so, you know, I'm based in Dublin. So I was literally in the city all the time. So I'd be conducting interviews in the pub, in the club, meeting people. And, um, you know, it, it was the whole social aspect of it because, you know, my friends are involved in the scene. I'm involved in the scene. We, we go to the clubs. We go, we, you know, it was just, there's that whole melting pot. And then you're getting introduced to people like their friends or they might know this person and go, would you like to interview this lad and blah, blah, blah. And so there was always that kind of rolling interaction. And, um, you know, I absolutely love that. And that was one of the things with, with the last year and a half that I absolutely missed, you know, it's sick of it. But um, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, joys, I suppose, every time, the first issue, getting the first issue out, holding the big first one. issue. That was a big in, one. In hand with Joey Belgram's, you know, mush on the front cover. Because, you know, it, it, there's a story behind that as well. And uh, getting Joey Belgram to to do a live interview with me on uh, with no with no previous issues mm. you know uh, magazine issues and um, you know I was able to discuss this with his agent at first and then the agent was bypassed and then it became a conversation with me and Joey and then out of the blue a year later um, literally a year later it was a Thursday afternoon and Madness. Agent rang and said, listen, um, Joey's free tonight to do the interview and it works out for like half 11 Irish time Thursday night. Crazy, crazy. You know, and uh, my son was a baby. So it was literally just getting the, right, get him sorted and then get the, get everything set up and do the, and do the interview because it could have been one of those where you're going, oh no, I can't do that. Can we do it tomorrow? I would have lost it. And then it was only around the time that I realized that Joey Beltram only does interviews, big interviews, once every five years. Wow. So Jesus. Yeah, mental, you know. And it was when I was actually speaking to him, I spoke to him for an hour. We did the whole live interview. We were speaking exactly like this, as if we were in the pub. And he said that a few times. He said, fuck it, I should be having a beer. Really. And I was having a beer. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was the, the thought going back to 1990. When I first heard Energy Flash on the tape on my mum yeah. and dad's high fi thinking, I want to speak to that guy. Who's this guy? Who's Joey Belgram? And then fast forward 30 odd years and um, 28, whatever it was. Um, and I'm here having a, having a natter and having the banter. And it wasn't all with him, essentially. You know, and yeah. he, he spoke to me like crazy how it works out, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad. It's like he showed me the same respect as he did if he was talking to Mix Mike and the first thing I said to him was, Joey, I said, just fucking be yourself. Literally exactly like that. And he just laughed because I was swearing. Mm. And like, okay, this is a different interview. This isn't just a normal, like, oh, you know, uh, very sanitized questions and blah, blah, blah. It was just like we were straight in it. And I mean, when you read the, when you read the interview, which is, is on the website, like it's, it's a long interview, um, you'll see, you get the feel of the banter that we had. So, that was a huge one, the first, getting the first issue out. Mm. Um, so that was like a lot of, you know, as they say, blood, sweat and tears and 80 pages, you know, wow. and, uh, I think it was, yeah, 80 pages. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know, just being, to hold it in the, in, in the paper form, you know, paper still has its, um, everything moves, obviously technology changes and everything else, but it's like, you know, you can you can never get away from the tactile experience of something when somebody you know you hand somebody something like that and you're you know you can't click any buttons on it mm. and you can't jump on any links but it's like when you give that to somebody and they're holding it it's like okay that's a magazine you know it's very easy to flick through stuff on a phone and that's one of the downfalls of that it's too easy to skip through stuff at least with that you've got the paper in front of you you can smell the print it's like it, it, it has a there's a maybe a bit of nostalgia in that. Do you know what I mean? But for me, I like it's, that as well. It's like when <sighs> any time I've seen, say, up and coming artists that we've interviewed and stuff over the years and, and supported, when they get a copy of that mag and they see their 
that bit in there, like it's like, oh my god, I'm in there, like, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's a different vibe from just. It is. It's, it's it nice is. to have both for convenience, but it's like papers. Paper will never die out, like unless yeah. they, they make it technology that it's exactly like paper, but you can do all the digital stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I kind of agree. There's something nostalgic but also engaging about the whole thing though too isn't it when you actually have something physical in your hand that you can just like flip over and back because we're yeah. so used to this um having it having, it's having more a of a or something you find cool exactly exactly um i think i spoke over you there it is a bit more of a um, not premium I hate words like that but it is a little bit more of a luxury to have the print because, you know, pe people moan about print costs have always been expensive, you know, and, th and that's just one of the things. But it's for me, it was um, it was it was part of the milestone. Like, mm -hmm. that's another thing. I had no idea how to fucking organize for prints. I had to learn all of that. And a lot of the times how I learned that was just going the, you know, um, when I thought the project was ready, it was the information that I was getting back from the printers. So that's how I learned a lot of the stuff that they'd be sending me back in the email going, oh, yeah, okay, that's right. I'll ask that. I'll ask that. And um, trial and error. Um, of course. So, of course. You know, and, and it was, yeah, it was. It was, a, It's. I suppose it's like, you know, people having kids and that, and it's like the first one, even though it's not supposed to be the favorite. There's a bit of something special because it's the first one. Now I can look back on the first issue and I cringe because there's loads of stuff obviously that I've learned from then. I'm like, oh no, I could change that and it could change this and it could change that. I still love the Joey Beltram interview. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, there's that's, more that's... that you can, you can modify and you update, but it's like, ugh, you can't, that's, that's what it was at that time. It was, it was right for what you could do at that time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, it, you know, you, you're still going to learn from the experience at the end of the day. And you've 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 dealt with so many other kind of interviews as well in the past. So that was the first baby and you learn from it. And you've you've spoken to so many other kind of artists now in the past, like and, and you've published that kind of content on the website and, and, and magazines. So, I mean, the first one's always a good it's always a special and there's no doubt about that, like, you know. 100%. Mike, so tell me this. Where do you see yourself in five or 10 years' time? This is our second last question. Um, us, that's probably us where we're at. I'd like to still be doing what I'm doing. Um, it just depends on the current climate and how things are going to change. Um, I always loved it. It wasn't always about like, you know, the people at the top of the game with the magazine. It was about the up and coming. And I love meeting those people and supporting them. And I suppose to um, answer your question, just to keep that trajectory running and maybe down the line make some money out of it. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that, that'd be nice for, for, for all the, for the hours done. But it's like if this project relies on um, making, you know, if it was just, you know, some people just going to go out and do stuff just to make money, then it wouldn't, it, it would have never happened. It yeah. had to be done as a labor of love. And I'm proud of that, that there was no, there was no funding. There was no, there was a lot of grunt work. And, and don't get me wrong, there's, 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 um, there, there's a, a nice core of people that have, that have worked with this and helped it go forward, you know, and I haven't mentioned Alan and Victoria and they were there pretty much from the start and, um, they were pivotal in the first couple of years. So, but over the last couple of years, it's kind of been the lone soldier. But I've had people, you know, putting content in and, um, you know, artwork and stuff. And Josh, that used to do, um, he's based in the States. He was doing, I think, for the first 10 issues, he did all the artwork on the front covers and stuff, which were outstanding. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, a, a nice, handful of core people that uh, kept it ticking over for the last while it's just pretty pretty much been um, my own engine do you know what i mean and you know the thing with the covid thing as well it's kind of like um, obviously that's changed the game as regards content mm. so 
five yeah, years. You've been, you've been hit pretty bad in recent times with the fact that like, like everybody, you know, and it's no, like there's no gigging, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, it's yes. like that's the small part of it. It's that lifestyle, mm. the social side of it just evaporated. The music and the venues and going to this, that, and the other. Obviously, that's you know as across the board for for so many fucking millions of people and, and i'm sick for them you know it's 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 a gut wrench five years from now ten years from now who fucking knows mm. um i'd like to think that um you know we're it, it's pushed on and that it's more it's established itself as you know a brand that it's known for uh, you know long form interviews it's like that people want to talk to and 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 the thing about that is a lot of the interviews that we got, we got from word of mouth where people have seen the stuff that we've done previously going all the way back to Joey Beltram and, you know, loads of other big names that have been involved in this. And I just want to name drop. It's just easy enough to go onto the website and see them all. Yeah, of it's course. Like, you know, a lot and of we'll, those... we'll leave, we'll leave, sorry, Mike, but we'll leave a link actually, by the way, in the, in the comments or wherever this uh, video is going to be published. We'll, 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 we'll definitely have a link to uh, iconic music and stuff. So sure. yeah. 100%. So yeah, um, that's that, that's that, that's where I hope it is. You know that I'm still involved in it. And, yeah, um, it, it's grown in 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 its capacity as it's adapted to the new environment. You know what I mean? So I think you will do because you've got a, a massive passion for it, and you know I follow you on social media and we talk relatively frequently. And you know I think you definitely have uh, <laughs> a passion for this scene, and it's ne- you couldn't beat this scene uh out of you with a stick put it that way <laughs> it's just <laughs> you, you you just have it in you man it's 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 100 percent. well look t- tell me this dude um last question you know the the, the whole idea of this these ser- this these episodes these these conversations are, are to try and sort of like uh inspire people and you know help people to kind of you know if they're thinking about doing something out of the norm, go out and do it. So you've been through that journey. You went from nothing to where you are right now. What advice would you give people that want to start their own passion project, brand, business, creativity, whatever? What would you say to them in terms of just getting started? If you have an idea and it's burning in your gut, run with it regardless of skill set, regardless of position, regardless of money, fuck the naysayers and don't give up. Yeah. And just push and push and push and push. And it's like, just keep pushing. If you if you drop off, pick yourself back up and push again because no one else is going to do it for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that is yeah, 100%, 100% true. And if, if what you're working on at the time doesn't uh, materialize of where you thought it should be, it means you're being prepared for something else that's going to come after mm-hmm. that you will have learned along the journey of the first experience. So don't give up. Yeah. I think that's so key. Uh, don't give up. Never give up. Keep pushing. I said in one of the, one of the, the, the first interviews on this whole thing was like, uh, you're always learning. You're never losing. You're, you're, you're always learning something to get you to the next, basically the next step. Yeah. And you, you and I, you and I have talked about this a lot, man, over the years. And um, it is so damn true. Um, we've we've vast experience right now at the moment of the ups and downs and the failures and the successes and the whole lot. And uh, yeah, don't give up. Keep going. Keep pushing forwards, and that's the way it should be. Hundred percent. Cool, man. I think yeah. that's a wrap. Cool, Sorry. Mike. Pleasure. Pleasure as always. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Uh, yeah, thanks for everything. Thanks for your time today. I hope people get value out of this now today. And um, yeah, I, a real pleasure having you having you involved. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to you. Yeah, nice appreciate it, dude. All right. 100%. Thanks. Take care, dude. Bye-bye. Bye.